A zine is a small circulation, self-published work of original or appropriated text and images, usually reproduced via a copy machine. Zines are the product of either a single person or a very small group, and are popularly photocopied into physical prints for circulation. A fanzine, a blend of fan and magazines, is a non-professional and non-official publication produced by enthusiasts of a particular cultural phenomena. The term was coined in October 1940 science fiction magazine by Russ Chavanet and popularised within science fiction fandom, entering the Oxford English Dictionary in 1949. Welcome to the Red Dice Diaries RPG podcast. I'm your host, John, and for this October OSR episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about zines. Okay, so you might say, well, it's OSR October, sure, but John, why are you talking about zines in this episode? Well, one of the things that's often proffered as one of the defining characteristics of the OSR movement is that it has this DIY aesthetic, this whole idea of just someone who likes a particular aspect of the hobby or a particular aspect of old school gaming, sort of putting forward their ideas in a way that's easily accessible for other people who share those ideas. And we often see this in numerous retro clones as well, where they'll mostly sort of stick to the sort of tried and tested rules, but occasionally they'll diverge off into an area of the the hobby or the rules in particular that particularly grabs the attention of the author one of the most obvious examples of this that comes to mind for me is the summoning rules in lamentations of the flame princess they're far more extensive than the creature summoning rules in any other game and i would deem that to indicate that and i might be wrong but i deem it to indicate that the author is therefore interested in that subject otherwise why would they go to such lengths to explore it in their game And as you heard before the intro music to this show, I read out the definition of a zine from the Wikipedia article about them, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this show. Now, I'm by no means any sort of historical authority on zines and their origins and why they were produced, but if you want to get into that, there's some good links in the the Wikipedia page where you can explore that as much as you want. But as I've said earlier, one of the things that's proffered about the OSR school of games is often that it allows people to explore particular aspects of the game or the rules that they have particular interest in. And I think this is where zines really excel and why they've really been taken into the heart of OSR gaming. I mean, I've just grabbed a handful of zines here from my shelf and I've got, not to name them all, but I've got Hunters in Death, I've got Delver, Goblin Manor, Dream Haven, The Adventurer's Guide to the Yolnage Forest, In the Pines by Tim Shorts, Sinister Red, Horrors of the Sepulchre, At Your Peril, A Practical Guide to Curses, Pamphlet of Pantheons, Issues of Dice Roll Zine, Fresh from the Forge, all about rebalancing weapons for old school play, and The Waking of Willoughby Hall. And these cover the gamuts from adventures additional supplementary rules and all manner of various other things and because they're mostly sort of probably less than 100 pages in like a5 or digest size whatever you prefer to call it sort of folded and center stapled to with varying degrees of color and artwork used in them they can be produced fairly cheaply or on a budget i suppose you could say if you're being a little bit more diplomatic and obviously this means that they can then be sold to other people who are enthusiastic about whatever the subject of the zine is without the capital outlay required for more larger and substantial books and that's not to rubbish the, the sort of full color luxury books and stuff like that because i love a good book as much as the next person i've got shelves groaning with them that would attest to that but it can be pretty expensive and perhaps sometimes the subject you want to cover doesn't need an entire book to cover it for instance if i look here at one of my zines fresh from the forge by ll blumeyer which is a rebalanced weapon system for old school play it's simply a an exploration of how weapons can be used and how they can be more appropriately finagled to work in, I suppose you could say, a more sort of accurate way in old school games. Now, this is fairly substantial as a zine. It's got lovely paper for it. 
and but it's still less than 45 pages center stapled now you wouldn't need a whole big coffee table book to come with that subject and i find it difficult to imagine myself paying out for a large book covering that one particular subject however if it's a small zine that you can pick up fairly easily and with minimal expense then i think people are probably going to be more willing to take a punt on it and it allows you to buy a wider variety of publications because they individually don't cost as much so i've got a big stack of zines here and i've got no end of others in pdf only format and i could probably buy easily sort of four or five zines for the cost of one book and i'm not talking about the big expensive collector's edition books i'm talking about a fairly normal sort of rpg book and that's great because it allows me to throw a bit of money to various different authors rather than stacking it all in one place but for me as i've said it means i've also got a wider variety of inspiration that i can pull on for my osr games and I know that these zines are being produced by people who they're not doing it expected to make multi-millions of pounds out of it, but they're doing it because they're enthusiastic and they believe in the work that they are putting forward. And I think that's an important thing. The definition before the music was obviously related more towards printed zines, which is only one possibility for them. Obviously, nowadays we can have PDFs and online files and stuff like that. And whilst these are referred to e-zines in the specific Wikipedia article, most people just normally call them zines, to be honest. But for someone like myself, who for various uh, reasons, I have a difficulty reading text from a computer screen for a prolonged period of time zines are a great compromise because i if i don't have the money to buy a hard copy even the the reduced costs of zines i can buy them in pdf and because they're sort of fairly small and i tend to mainly use them just to reference things every now and again i can read them more easily on screen because i'm not trying to read through a whole massive coffee table book but also, if I do want some of it in hard copy, I can print out the bits I need fairly easily without normally having to worry about colour backgrounds and all of the associated complications with printing stuff out from a more substantial book. Another benefit of zines is I feel that they are within reach of creative types who maybe don't have un the unlimited resources of a large company behind them. Basically, if you've got a computer, or maybe even not that, if you want to go for the sort of prit stick and scissors and cutting text out sort of method. But most people have a computer and a printer of some sort nowadays. And if you can do basic layout and get your text together, then you can put together a simple zine. And it's easier than ever now to put it into a PDF and then make it available on like drive through or itch.io or something like that. We also have Kickstarter who do their regular zine quest, sort of a boost signal booster for those who want to do zines. So I think nowadays it's easier than ever to produce a zine in terms of the physical production, obviously the creative input and the actual text and stuff like that has to come from the author or the, the small team involved in it but the actual physical production you know getting the layout on the page getting it put into a pdf or in a print available form is now easier than ever and i think that's the real benefit it means that creative people within the osr sphere can get their work out to other people who may be enthusiastic about the same things as they are without having again to make this initial massive capital outlay which a lot of people don't have available and that's the real benefit as far as i'm concerned or well, one of the benefits it means creatives can put out their work out for others to see it as the consumers or the audience, we get to experience this veritable smorgasbord of different creative works. And as I've said on numerous episodes, I'm a fan of getting as much inspiration as possible, even if you disregard some things by having a wider field of inspiration to pull on for your OSR games, you have more stuff in that melting pot and you'll produce more surprising outcomes and perhaps stuff that you wouldn't have even considered otherwise. So I think that is one of the great benefits 
of zines. So there we are. That's my short episode talking about why I think zines are a useful thing within the OSR sphere. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any comments on this episode or any of those we've done recently, you can get in touch with us, maybe be featured in a voicemail episode. And there's a few ways you can do that. You can either drop us a voicemail message on our old Anchor account or on SpeakPipe. There'll be links in the description of this show. Or you can send us an email, either with just text in it or with an MP3 attached to it, to rdrpgpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks very much for listening. Take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun.